Today I want to talk to you guys about free and open source software licenses. There are many different free licenses out there, but not all free licenses are created equal. There are really two different kinds of licenses out there. There are the copy left licenses, such as the GPL, which has some restrictions on what you can do with the software as far as what you can do with the derived works from that software. And then there are the permissive licenses. Those would include things like the MIT license, the BSD license, the Apache license. So let's just briefly talk about some of the more popular free licenses out there. Let's take the MIT license. The MIT license is a very popular free license. It is a permissive license. It is probably the most popular license out there. One of the reasons for its popularity is the fact that it is permissive. There are no copy left protections in the MIT license at all. Due to the lack of restrictions in the license, the MIT license can be associated with many other licenses, including most of the other free licenses and even proprietary licenses. The MIT license allows you to produce derivative works from the original source, but you don't have to open source the derivative work. You don't have to provide the source to anyone. If you wanted to, you could derive a work from something licensed under the MIT license and relicense it under a different license, including a closed source proprietary license. The next license I want to talk about is the BSD license. Now, there are three main flavors of the BSD license. There is the original four clause BSD license. Then there is the revised three clause edition of the BSD license. And then there is a simplified two clause edition to the BSD license. The BSD license is very permissive and is quite similar in spirit to the MIT license. In fact, really the simplified two clause BSD license and the MIT license, I would be splitting hairs trying to tell you the difference between those two licenses. The BSD license, much like the MIT license, there's no copy left protection and commercial use is allowed. Like the MIT license, derivative works can be licensed under different terms. The three clause and four clause variants of the BSD license do add an extra restriction. They restrict you from using the original author or trademark to endorse your derived work. The next license I want to talk about is the Apache license. Now, the Apache license is probably the second most popular free license out there right behind the MIT license. The Apache license is, once again, a very permissive license, although unlike the MIT and the BSD license, it does clearly define a few things. It defines what constitutes legal entities, what constitutes a derivative work, what constitutes contributions to the project, and the Apache license clearly defines the terms surrounding the granting of patent rights. The Apache 2.0 license also requires that derivative works, they must provide the recipient of those derivative works a copy of the Apache 2.0 license with that derived work. The derived work must contain all copyright, patent, attribution information in the derived work from the original. The Apache license really seems to be growing in popularity lately. I see more and more people using it for their software projects. I think that's due to the fact that it's a permissive license, but unlike the MIT license and the BSD license, the Apache license does take the trouble to define a few things, especially regarding patent and redistribution rights. And the fourth license I want to discuss today is the GPL, which is the GNU Public License. It's probably the least most popular license of the four I just described. Why? It's because it's not a permissive license. It is what we call a copy left license. Rather than allowing developers to write their own copyright statements, copy left licenses such as the GPL do not allow for this. Copy left licenses demand that the derived works have the same licensing as the original source. This means if I take a piece of software that is licensed under the GPL and I create a derivative work my derivative work must also be licensed under the GPL. It must abide by the terms of the GPL. It also means that developers cannot make claims as far as 
patent or copyright on the original work. The GPL, of course, is created by Richard Stallman and the GNU Project and the Free Software Foundation, of course, heavily endorses the GPL. As such, the GPL really is built upon the four freedoms of free software. The four freedoms are the freedom to use the software in any way you choose, the freedom to make modifications, the freedom to share the source code with anyone, and the freedom to share those changes. I think one of the things that prevents more people from adopting the GPL is I think some people misunderstand the, the idea behind copyleft versus those permissive license like the BSD, MIT, and Apache licenses. I think some people assume that the GPL, if you license something under, under the GPL, it can't be used for commercial purposes, that you can't make money with GPL software, and that's simply not the case. Making money is not antithetical to free software or the free software movement or the GPL. The only real restriction that the GPL places is that the source code of your derived work must be freely available for everyone. You cannot take a piece of GPL software and derive something from it, slap a proprietary closed source license on it, and then sell it as proprietary software. The GPL does not allow for such an immoral action, unlike the permissive licenses we discussed earlier. Unlike permissive licenses, the GPL is very restrictive. Why? Because it restricts a derivative work from being licensed under another license. Your derivative work has to be also licensed under the GPL. You must pass on the same freedoms that you received from that GPL licensed software. You must pass it on to the next person. What scares a lot of software developers about the GPL is this viral nature of the GPL, that it just spreads everywhere. For example, if you included a, a library, Libraries are smaller programs that are often the building blocks for, you know, much bigger pieces of software. But say you include this software library in your project. This library is licensed under the GPL. Your eventual derived work that includes that library as part of a you know, much bigger work, now it has to be GPL'd. That scares a lot of software developers. So you do have a lot of free and open source software developers out there that avoid the GPL. And I don't understand why. I think permissive licenses, such as the MIT license and the BSD license, I think those licenses are immoral. I think the lack of a copyleft protection is completely unethical. I think it is antithetical to the free software movement and the open source software movement. In this particular case, I think Richard Stallman was right. I think that if you are really serious about free and open source software, then you put it out there in the public, you are granting people these freedoms, those freedoms have to be protected. Yes, you have to create a more restrictive license sometimes, but you're, you're creating a more restrictive license to protect people from losing their freedom. I see a lot of software projects out there that use these permissive licenses and they think, well, if I use this really permissive license, it will make my software more popular because if I use the GPL, you know, it's, got, it's so restrictive, my piece of software won't be as popular. For example, Linux. Linux is licensed under the GPL. The kernel is GPL'd. The BSD license, they wanted to go a much more free and permissive license with the BSD license, which is very simple, just a couple of lines, and you know, you can do anything you want with BSD license software. You can close source it and make it whatever you want. And I think the BSD guys thought, you know, that would work to their advantage. It would make BSD more popular as opposed to something GPL like Linux. Well, BSD, how's that working for you? Ultimately, though, if you're a software developer, you have to decide what software license is right for you. I strongly encourage you to consider the GPL because of the copy left nature of that license. But, you know, again, you have to make those choices for yourself. It's a personal decision. I will share a link to a website that if you're not sure what license is appropriate for you, will help you decide. Now, before I go, I would like to thank a few special people. These names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are the patrons of the channel. Without these guys, this episode about software licenses wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.